So I know that a lot of you are coming in here and probably thinking, nope, not a zilch, ain't gonna happen. This game has no future. And honestly, I'm in the same boat as all of you. Like the only reason I felt like talking about this game was because my community in the Discord decided to do a vote on whether or not to delete my World War III chat. And it was pretty unanimous. They kind of did it without my say so. Sometimes I feel like my Discord has a mind of its own. Someone sent help. I mean, as much as I like, World War 3? There's just no denying the fact that they botched the launch of their own game. Man, and it would have been so perfect too, because the marketing was there, and the player base, it would have been so massive. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me add some context as to what happened back then. So for those of you that don't know or maybe don't remember, World War 3 at the time was being touted as a good alternative to Battlefield 5. For those of you that are unaware, Battlefield 5 was being lambasted because of its new numerous issues, appearance, and really just the way that the devs handled it. Yeah. One of the developers quite literally said, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Considering Battlefield's situation today, bad choice of words. Like it honestly felt like they were trying to appeal to an audience that doesn't even play video games, so I'm just like, what? But getting back to World War 3, I fully believe that the devs knew what they were doing in terms of marketing, because they saw that a lot of players were disenfranchised by Battlefield. So through marketing and talking to content creators that were Battlefield focused, they were able to hype up World War 3. I think that initially World War 3 was supposed to be for like people who only liked like Battlefield 3 and 4, but as soon as shit hit the fan for uh, Battlefield 5, then they went all out. They wanted to capitalize on that fallout. They wanted to take that player base. And to be honest, it was, it was a genius move. Like there was a lot of people who were looking for an alternative and World War 3 stepped up to try and be the big boy. This is why I said it would have been perfect were it not for the launch. Anytime that I talk about World War 3, I always say, man, this game would have been so perfect were it not for the Bonch launch. Well, what happened? That's just it. Nothing. At the timing of the game's release, Nobody was able to play the game. Why, you might ask? Well, nobody could even get into it. Yeah, the loading screens were so long. Like, there were reports of people waiting a full day before actually getting into the game itself. The loading times could have been anywhere from two hours to a full day. And even if you were to get into a match, there wasn't that many people inside of the server to really play against because people were still waiting. Such a tragic, tragic event to happen because there was so many people that were trying to get into the game and they just could not do it do it. If I remember correctly, this lasted about two weeks before anybody could actually get into it, but by then, the game already tarnished its name. I mean, that's bad enough, but I think the thing that really stuck with a lot of people is just the fact that there were a bunch of people who were testing the game ahead of time, and they were warning the developers that there was a lot of issues with the game, and that they should probably delay the game, but I think because of the whole marketing thing, they really wanted to have momentum going into their game, and so they decided to release it anyway. Now, if the game would have actually worked on release, I feel like the game would be in such a better state than it is now. But because it didn't work and they didn't listen to the fan base, not only did they tarnish the game by botching the launch, but they also lost the trust of their community and burned several others like me at that launch. When you lose the trust of your community, it is hard to come back from that. You know, what's interesting is that anytime that I drop a YouTube video on World War 3, it tends to get a pretty decent amount of views but anytime that World War 3 drops an update, like a small one or a major one, it never seemed to get any of that player base back. Like I'd go back to try and see if I could actually hop into a match and you know, there's still like a base there, but it's not one that actually fills up the entire server. Like the base is relatively small at this point, which is kind of just a shame because I do actually like the game. It's honestly not that bad. At one point I was even addicted to it, but the player base just wasn't big enough for me to stick around, which is again, such a shame because the game isn't that bad. World War 3 was a game that had a lot of potential. I honestly felt like it could have been something that was enormous, that brings something to the table that a lot of Battlefield players just didn't have anymore. But it was wasted on something that in hindsight feels so petty. But I mean, I guess I could see where they're coming from because they wanted to capitalize on the situation. But if only they had listened to their community, they probably wouldn't have had to remove the game from Steam itself. Just to be clear, for anybody who bought the game, you're still able to play it. But for anybody that 
that's trying to buy into it. It's not there as of the recording of this video. Not true. It's still on Steam. It's still there. I just did a check and it's still there. So initially I thought that, wow, this is it? The game's dead? I mean, they removed it from Steam. So that's the only conclusion that I could come to really. But no, it turns out they ended up partnering with a publisher known as My.Games. For those of you that don't know, My.Games has a bunch of games underneath its belt. There's maybe like two that I know of, Warface and Armored Warfare. The only thing that any of these games have in common is that they're all free to play, which means they all have one form or another of microtransactions. So it's most likely that My Dot Games is making bank off of all of these games. Now, I have no idea of what the reputation of My Dot Games is. I don't know how egregious their microtransactions are, or if they strong arm the consumer into getting microtransactions. I don't know. But what I do know is that they had something to do with the player loss in Armored Warfare. At least I think. If anybody has experience with My Dot Games, let me know down in the comments because I honestly don't know enough to really make a judgment call on them. So I'm just going to assume that they're partnering up with all these people so that they can help them out. And that's what the developers of World War 3 seem like they're going to do. There's a real possibility here that one of two things happens. Either World War 3 decides to go free to play and they add in a bunch of microtransactions, which could be very possible considering my dot games, all their games are basically free to play with microtransactions. They could go that route or they use the money that the publisher gives to them to amp up the game more and use that revenue for marketing purposes. I mean, World War 3's marketing has thus far been really good. And like I said, the World War 3 game itself is actually not that bad. So I mean, if they do decide to go free to play, I think the game would actually survive. Although I don't know how people would feel about that because, you know, they did pay money for the initial game. I mean, I bought this game. So would they give me like extra perks if they decide to do that? I mean, I bought Insurgency Sandstorm and they're talking about putting microtransactions in. Is that is that how it's going to work? Like, I don't know. They actually had an article out and it says, uh, players who have already purchased World War 3 will be able to continue playing unpeated. Does that unpeated mean that they're going to add limitations to certain people who haven't bought the game? Curious. With veteran status and valuable in-game cosmetics being rewarded to early access players upon the game's release. So this just might be a dead giveaway that the game might actually go free to play. Um, honestly, I think that this might actually be a good move for World War 3. I mean, with the influx of income coming into the game, it's obviously going to give them a lot more time to make improvements to the game, add more things, make more maps, get more cosmetics. So it's definitely going to be a plus for them, but I'm not entirely sure how the player base is, well, whatever player base is left, is going to feel about that. Or maybe nobody really cares, because I mean, there's not a whole lot of people that were in the servers anytime that I went to play. I think like maybe the very hardcore base that still sticks around this game is probably going to be okay with this, but I have to wonder what people are going to think, you know, the ones that actually paid money for that. I mean, me, I really liked World War 3. I felt that the content was there. There was a lot of uh, things that you could do in terms of like customization. The bad things really happened at launch when they didn't listen to the community and release the game anyway, along with content becoming scarce towards the end here. Aside from that, the game's pretty solid. It just needed that player base, which it never really got, at least from what I played. If you think otherwise, let me know down below. But yeah, when it comes to going free to play, I feel like I would be okay with this, but I guess it just depends on how they decide to do it. Like, is it going to be a game that creates really good looking cosmetics that makes me want to actually fork out money to try and get them? Or is it going to strong arm me by hindering gameplay or forcing me to get into some sort of like battle pass or whatever, strong arming the consumer into buying something because you have to. I definitely think that it would be a good move for World War 3 to go free to play because there's a solid game here and their marketing team is pretty fantastic. Honestly, World War 3 could be probably one of the best free to plays I've played in a long while. Not to say that there aren't any good ones out there, but World War 3 would certainly be up there. So World War 3's future is looking bright with the influx of money, but only time will tell if the game comes back into relevancy. Will people remember what happened at launch? I mean, people do have short term memory, so there's a chance that people won't even care and they'll just take the game as it is. So we'll see. If you like the fact that I cover games like World War 3, why don't you go ahead, like the video, share the video and comment down below. What are your thoughts on the future of this game? Let me know, let me know, let me know. Down below, down below, down below. If you're someone that's new, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. Or if you would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, just send two bucks a month. That's all I need. And with that all being said, I wanna thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.